Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to the immunology lectures and we were discussing on the complement pathway. So, we have discussed about the complement overviews in our last class and uh, if you remember that uh, we told in the last class that the complement pathway can actually be initiated in three different ways. The classical pathway which is an antibody dependent pathway, then you have an alternative pathway which is antibody independent and you have a lectin pathway which is also antibody independent. So, it basically does not depends on any antibody antigen interaction. And I also told that all these three pathways they finally tend to converge at a single point that is they try to produce a lot of C3 convertase which actually cleaves the C3 into C3A and C3B which are the cleaved products, the cleaved complement products. So, how these pathways they do these things? So, as uh, we told that initially the complement uh, was found or discovered as a system which can complement for the humoral branch of immunity. So, it basically is the effector pathway of the humoral branch of immunity and it helps to complete the function of the antibodies. So, it is not only that the antibodies binding to antigen will complete the function, it also requires uh, the complementation by some uh, proteins and some factors and those are the complement proteins. So, the complement proteins can initiate the pathways in three different ways the classical, the alternative and the lectin of which only the classical pathway is antibody dependent and the rest two are not. So, let us quickly look into how uh, these three pathways are initiated and the three pathways they try to break down the different complement proteins and uh, produce the C3 convertase which finally leads to breakdown of C3 into C3A and C3B. So, starting from here, so if you look in this picture, we have the classical pathway, the alternative pathway and the lectin pathway. Let us consider this portion to be the surface of the cell that is the cell surface where this antigen is bound to the antibodies primarily the IgM the immunoglobulin M. Now, binding of this IgM when the IgM binds to the corresponding antigen on the surface of the pathogen or on the surface of the bacterium that leads to a conformational change, conformational change and this conformational change exposes the regions on the FC region on the antibody. So, on this FC portion of the antibody which has binding sites to the complement proteins. Now, to which complement protein? It binds to the complement protein which the name looks very complicated if you look it is the C1 Q R2 S2. So, basically the C1 complement protein it comprises of many polypeptide chains among which this C1 Q it comprises of approximately there are 18 peptide chains which are arranged in a ring like structure like this. So, into 6 ring like structures and this can bind to the R and the S. So, it basically 
forms a oligomeric structure in presence of C 1 Q, C 1 R and C 1 S. So, basically it is written together as C 1 Q R 2 S 2, it comprises of the C 1 Q, the C 1 R and the C 1 S and they together forms this complex structure which is the C 1 Q R 2 S 2. So, per unit there are two C 1 R and 2 C 1 S. So, that is why it is R 2 S 2 and this is the C 1 Q R 2 S 2 and this bar over here usually in a complement activation pathway this bar usually indicates an active protease or an active protein. So, uh, uh, after, after these cleavage products they again try to associate with each other with the target proteins then they form these active proteins which can cleave further more uh, complement proteins. So, they are indicated by this kind of a bar on the uh, top. So, these are nomenclatures. So, once this C 1 Q R 2 S 2 can bind to an IgM or the FC region of the IgM, then it is kind of activated. And since I told that these are all proteases, so they can lead to the cleavage of other complement proteins that is the target complement proteins which are present in the vicinity. For example, they can break C 2 and C 4. So, C 2 is broken down to C 2 A and C 2 B and C 4 is broken down to C 4 A and C 4 B. Now, these are the cleavage products the C 2 A 2 B 4 A and 4 B. So, now it forms they immediately associates and they form another complement protein which is known as C 4 B 2 A. It is a C 4 B 2 A. Now, this C 4 B 2 A is nothing but a C 3 convertase which means it can convert or break down C 3 into C 3 A and C 3 B. So, what happens C 1 Q R 2 S 2 that is a C 1 complement protein. The C 1 Q R 2 S 2 when it binds to the F C region of the antibody after there is an antigen antibody interaction this F C region binds to the C 1 Q that leads to activation of the C 1 leading to cleavage of C 2 and C 4 and C 2 breaks down into 2 A 2 B. C 4 breaks down into 4 A and 4 B and this 4 B and the 2 A they associate together to form the complement protein or the C 3 convertase which is also known as the C 4 B 2 A. Now, this C 4 B 2 A is a C 3 convertase that means it can cleave C 3 into 3 A and 3 B. So, it can cleave C 3 into 3 A, C 3 A and C 3 B. So, now let us look into for the time being we just stop here on the com on the classical pathway. We go to the lectin pathway, we see how the lectin pathway is initiated and how it is initiated. So, in the lectin pathway as I told there are specific lectins like mannose binding lectin for example, MBL and also there are lectin proteins like phycolin. Now, these can bind to carbohydrates or mannose molecules that are present on the surface of the pathogen and when they bind to the surface of the pathogen, they can also bind to a class of serine proteases which are the membrane associated serine proteases like the MASP1 and the MASP2 these are also parts or components of this lectin pathway. So, they can bind to this MASP1 and MASP2 and it forms an oligomeric structure similar to this and once this binding occurs they can also convert C2 and C4 into 
the broken products like C 2 A C 2 B and C 4 into C 4 A and C 4 B similar to what we have seen in case of the classical pathway. Now, here again this leads to the formation of C 4 B 2 A. So, again the C 4 B and the C 2 A they combine. So, 4 B and 2 A they combine and they form another intermediate in the complement system which is known as the C 4 B 2 A and it is also a C 3 convertase. Okay. So, now this C 3 convertase can also convert C 3 into C 3 A and C 3 B. So, you see that in both the pathways you have formation of an intermediate which is the C 4 B 2 A which can lead to conversion or breakdown of the C 3 into C 3 B and C 3 A. Now, C 3 B is one of the very important complement components. Now, let us see as I told initially that the alternative pathway is initiated only when there is C 3 B present and you also need the presence of another factor called the factor D. So, you have let us say this is the broken product of C 3 B that is the C 3 B the broken product of C 3 along with that you have another factor which we call as the factor B and with the help of a third complement protein also known as factor D it cleaves the factor B into B B. So, B again is cleaved since it is also a complement protein it is cleaved and forms a large fragment which is called the B B. So, now this B B after breaking of this factor B. So, this B is a broken product of this B factor B and this is possible only in presence of factor D and the C 3 B. So, now this forms another C 3 convertase which is known as C 3 B B B. So, now this is another C 3 convertase. Okay. So, all these 3 C 3 convertases are formed at the end of these 3 pathways the classical pathway, the alternative pathway or the lectin pathway. Among these 3 pathways if you see only the classical pathway is an antibody dependent pathway. The rest of the 3 are antibody independent pathways. Now, if we try to see how these 3 pathways they converge, they converge at a single point. Now, they all try to break down the C 3. So, they all try to break down the their central role is to break down this C 3 and they break it down to C 3 A and C 3 B again C 3 A and C 3 B. Now, this C 3 A the C 3 B can have it can work in two ways one it can further associate it can further associate 
with this 4 b 2 a intermediate in form C 4 b 2 a 3 b. So, it is just simple addition. So, if you see it forms another convertase which is also known as C 5 convertase. So, now their role is to break down the complement protein C 5. So, somehow they have to break down the complement protein C 5. A second way is they form another C 5 convertase by the action of a protein properidine. So, this properidine it can also associate with the C 3 B and it can form the C 3 B B B C 3 B. So, this is also another C 5 convertase. So, this is also a C 5 convertase. So, at least you have two C 5 convertases here one and here one. So, both of them both of these C 5 convertases be it the C 4 B 2 A 3 B or so 4 B 2 A which was originally a C 3 convertase when it associates with another broken C 3 B it forms C 4 B 2 A 3 B and this is a C 5 convertase. It can break down C 5 into 5 A and 5 B. Similarly, this C 3 B B B which is a product from the alternative pathway can also in presence of properidine it associates with another C 3 B breaks down another C 3 into 3 A and 3 B and that C 3 B can also associate with 3 B B B and forms C 3 B B B C 3 B. So, this is also another C 5 convertase. Now, their job is to break down C 5 into C 5 A and C 5 B. So, we come across at least two major components in the complement activation pathway. One is this C 3 B which can directly this C 3 B can directly coat the pathogen. So, it can coat the pathogen surface and it can assist in the process of opsonization. Or it can further as associate with other complement broken products and can form the C 5 convertase. This C 5 convertase can actually break down C 5 into 5 A and 5 B and this C 5 B can then associate with other complement proteins like C 6, C 7, C 8 and C 9 to form C 5 B 6 7 8 9 and what is this C 5 B 6 7 8 9? It is nothing but the membrane attack complex or the MAC. So, now this membrane attack complex can attack the surface of the pathogen and form this kind of a hole where you have fluids in rushing fluids, fluids can come in and can finally lyse or lead to lysis of the cell. And also you have two other smaller products at the end, one is the C 3 A and the C 5 A. So, this C 3 A and C 5 A these together So, 3 A and 5 A they together can lead to enhance inflammatory responses. So, they enhance inflammation. If you remember the classes from our inflammation, 
uh, enhancement of inflammation. You will remember that with C 3 A and C 5 A were one of the major components that uh, could work as chemo attractants and also they can bind to many cell surface complement receptors and lead to degranulation of the granulocytes leading to uh, increase in the or increase in release of the histamine and that would lead to the uh, increase in the vascular permeability and then uh, would lead to draw more neutrophils and will increase the inflammatory responses. So, basically C 3 A and C 5 A these two cleaved products of C 3 and C 5 they enhance inflammation. C 5 B which is a cleaved product of C 5 initiates the formation of the membrane attack complex we will discuss in our next class how the membrane attack complex formation actually occurs in presence of C 5 B and the other complement proteins like 6, 7, 8, 9 and C 3 B can directly lead to the process of opsonization that is coating the pathogen or the surface of the pathogen with this uh, C 3 B the cleave product and leading to phagocytosis. So, this is a very, very, very general overview of the complement activation pathways, the classical, the alternative and the lectin. We will go through them one by one once again and we will try to understand uh, how this complement activation occurs. So, starting again back with the classical pathway as I repeatedly told or I am still uh, repeating that the classical pathway of the complement activation starts only as a result of antigen antibody interaction. So, when there is an antigen antibody interaction there is a conformational change in the antibody that leads to exposure of the FC regions which can interact with the complement protein C 1 leading to or facilitating an interaction in this region leading to the F C region of the antibody to interact with the C 1 complement. The C 1 complement here is assuming an oligomeric structure which is basically formation of this structure occurs due to association of the 3 subunits the C 1 Q, the R and the S and they form this kind of an oligomer of which the C 1 Q itself contains 18 peptides or 18 uh, peptides which are arranged in a ring like 6 ring like structure like this and they associate with this R 2 and S 2 and forms the C 1 Q R 2 S 2. Now, this C 1 Q R 2 S 2 can cleave two complement proteins C 2 and C 4. C 2 can be cleaved into 2 A and 2 B 4 is cleaved into 4 A and 4 B. This C 4 B and 2 A they come together that means they associate with each other and once they associate they forms another intermediate which is the C 4 B 2 A. So, we just retain the C at the beginning for the complement and the broken fractions the broken fragments 4 B 2 A and this protein or this intermediate is known as a C 3 convertase. The name is given as C 3 convertase because it can break down C 3 into 3 A and 3 B. Similarly, coming to the lectin pathway, the lectin pathway I told it is an antibody independent pathway. So, it primarily starts with the interaction of specialized lectin molecules like phycolin or this MBL which is a mannose binding lectin they can interact with this mannose or other oligosaccharide molecules or structures that are present on the surface of the cell of the pathogen on the surface of the pathogen. So, all these interactions are going on on the surface of the pathogen. So, when this MBL or this phycolin or phycolin it can bind to the carbohydrates on the surface that would lead to activation of this kind of serine proteases which are associated with these lectins the MBL or the phycolin. So, MASP 1 or MASP 2, MASP 1 and MASP 2 are the membrane associated serine proteases remember. Now, when this serine proteases they are activated they can also 
cleave two complement proteins similar to what we have seen in case of the classical pathway, they can also cleave the C2 and the C4 leading to from C2 it forms C2A to B from C4 it forms 4A and 4B. Once C2 is broken down to 2A to B and 4 to 4A 4B again similar to what we have seen in the classical pathway there is interaction between the two cleaved products leading to formation of a C3 convertase which is C 4 B 2 A. Now, from the two independent pathways like the classical pathway and the lectin pathway, we get the same intermediate product that is the 4 B 2 A 4 B 2 A. So, in this case also we have 4 B 2 A here also we have 4 B 2 A and both of these are nothing but C 3 convertase. So, C 3 convertase which can convert C 3 into 3 A and 3 B. Looking into the alternative pathway, now wh what is the role of the alternative pathway? The alternative pathway is initiated only when C 3 B 3 B is available. How can C 3 B be available? In two ways, one it can be available as a product of the classical or the lectin pathways or there can be spontaneous breakdown of C3 into 3A and 3B and there can be minimal very minimum amount of 3B is available. So, the alternative pathway basically is an amplification system it just amplifies the signal if the cleavage product 3B is available then only it can amplify the signal. So, when there is 3 B available it can associate with another complement factor or a complement protein we call it the factor B and this factor B can also be cleaved it can be cleaved into B B. So, the larger fragment of the cleavage of B is the B B similar to 3 B 4 B it is the B B. Now, this B B is cleaved in presence of another complement factor which is the factor D. So, if you see this portion this 3 B associates with the factor B and the factor D leading to the cleavage of factor B into B B and now this B B associates with the 3 B and forms another C 3 convertase which is C 3 B B B. <coughs> so, from the three independent pathways what we get is 3 C 3 convertases and what they all do is they attack the C 3 again and they try to break down as much C 3 possible into 3 A and 3 B. Now, you see the B products I have marked them in red and the A products I have marked them in blue. So, why? Because the 3 B products the either the 3 or the 5 the B products they are effective in two pathways that is the lysis and the opsonization. What this 3 B can do is 3 B can have two different functions one it can again form or associate with 4 B 2 A to form the C 4 B 2 A 3 B. <coughs> this C 4 B 2 A 3 B is a C 5 convertase it converts C 5 into. So, it is a convertase means it converts the target. So, C 5 is the target it converts C 5 into 5 A and 5 B. Similarly, <coughs> this C 3 B in presence of another complement protein which is the properidine properidine it can associate with 3 B B B and form another C 5 convertase which is known as the C 3 B B B C 3 B. So, there are two C 5 convertases that are possible and they are formed one is C 4 B 2 A 3 B and C 3 B B B C 3 B. So, these two what we see in this part these two are C 5 convertases like these were C 3 convertases 
this is a C5 convertases. They are also sometimes known as C3, C5 convertase because they also still retain the property of C3 convertase, but they are mostly C5 convertase. So, they this C5 convertase can then cleave this C5 into 5A and 5B. 5B is a component of the membrane attack complex or the MAC. So, it associates with other complement proteins like C6, C7, C8, C9 and forms the membrane attack complex and this is this tubular structure that is formed because of association of these, these complement proteins 5, B, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, this is nothing but the membrane attack complex or the MAC and this MAC is nothing but a tubular structure that is inserted on the cell surface leading to formation of a hole and that leads to lysis of the cell. At the same time the C5 which has been broken into 5A and 5B, the 5B as we see is mainly forming the membrane attack complex, the 5A as well as the C3A which was also a cleaved product of C3, the 3A and the 5A these two together they can be important factors in enhancing inflammation. And finally, 3B as we have seen here 3B independently other than forming the C5 convertase, it can also lead to opsonization, it can go and coat the surface of the pathogen and assist the phagocytic process and lead to opsonization. So, this is a overview of the entire uh, comp uh, the three different complement pathways, the classical, the alternative and the lectin pathways. I hope uh, you understand this. Uh, this is a, a very general overview how these three pathways are being activated, the cascade of the events that are occurring in the three different pathways, how they are being activated and how they finally converge at the formation of the C3 convertase and breaking down the C3 into 3A and 3B and finally breaking down of C5 and uh, either mediating inflammation or cell lysis or opsonization. So, uh, we will keep continue, uh, we will keep continue uh, discussion about this complement system in our next, next lecture as well uh, for today uh, that is all. So, thank you very much.